I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> Greetings all and welcome to Savage McTell. It is the 3rd of February 2018. The following video is pretty much primarily about uh, Rose McGowan and her ties to the Children of God cult, her ties to the feminist movement, her ties to the PSYOP that is hashtag me too. And uh, the most recently, there's been a video that came out the other day or today about her having a meltdown with a trans woman at a Barnes & Noble uh I guess, book signing or talk she had. And uh, anyway, we're going to go right into the video. And uh, following the, the video, the three-minute confrontation, I delve into a couple of articles about the children of God and some of her beginnings with the cult that is the children of God. So enjoy. Catch you on the flip side. So have I. So have I. So have I. We're the same. My point was we are the same. There's an entire show called ID Channel, a network dedicated 24 hours a day to women getting abused, murdered, sexualized, and violated. And you are too, sister. It's the same. And trans women are in violence. And you do nothing for them. Trans women are in men's prisons. And what have you done for them? What have you done for women? Lots of things. I've done lots of things too. You don't know my life. Don't sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Enough. Get lost. I am a woman and trans woman. Congratulations. So am I. planet leave me alone I do not subscribe to your rules I do not subscribe to your language you do not put labels on me or anybody step the fuck back what I do is for the fucking world and you should be fucking grateful so shut the fuck up get off my back what have you done It is a much fucking smaller population. There's not a network, however, devoted to your fucking death. There's not advertisers advertising tampons as a camera goes lovingly up a girl's body as she's being fucking raped and strangled. Piss off. And until you can collect that fucking check, back up. My name is Rose McGowan, and I'm obviously fucking brave. God damn it. <laughs> We tell the truth. God, I'm bored, right? Isn't it boring? Isn't it bored? Isn't everyone bored? Just fucking. All right, this comes to us from people.com celebrity, and it's a story of, uh, it, it's been published years ago, but it's how uh, Rose McGowan's story of leaving the Children of God cult, how she survived and escaped the cult. Rose McGowan's first nine years were anything but traditional. They were spent in the Children of God sect, a group that extolled the virtues of free love and preparing for the second coming of Jesus. Although it proved a harrowing experience, she fled with her family, she says, once the cult began advocating child-adult sexual relations, as the setting at first was really idyllic, remembering, remembers the actress 38 who rose to fame in the TV series Charmed and now stars in Conan the Barbarian. 
3D. I grew up in pastoral settings, specifically the Italian countryside, where her parents were members of the local branch of the Children of God. But McCowan, who was born in Florence, knew instinctively that she didn't belong in such a place. I've always been who I am, she says, explaining that she did not believe in God. She wasn't in accord with the hippie lifestyle, and certainly not with the aesthetic or the subservient role of a female in the sect. Even at a tender age, McCowan rebelled. I did not want to be like those women. They were basically there to serve the men sexually, she says. When her father began to fear that Rose might be molested, she says my dad was strong enough to realize that the hippies, hippie love had gone south. She fled with the children of God with her father and sibling, siblings and moved to the U.S. where McCowan recalls that it was not an easy assimilation into the mainstream way of life. My brothers and sisters, we thought everyone was boring. Many years later, she returned to the small town in Italy where her then-boyfriend, rocker Marilyn Manson, we created quite a stir, she admits. Looking back at her early experiences, McCowan deflects with humor some of the dangers and difficulties she's faced. In contrast with the dress-down hippie look and the cult, she says, I came out of the womb waving red lipstick. And then uh, here in, this is pretty recently from SundayExpress.co.uk. This is from June of 2017, so a little more recent than that previous article. Rose McGowan, I shaved my head so men would stop seeing me as a sex symbol. Or could it be that you just hit the wall? Or could it be that you grew up in a cult and you've been an operative of the CIA this entire time? Because... Isn't it interesting that there have been other famous people in Hollywood and the music industry who have been members of the Children of God cult? Hmm, let's take a quick look at that. All right, back to the article. Uh, this is why she's saying she uh, shaved her head. Okay, Rose McGowan has spoken out her reasons for shaving her head, saying she refused to be pigeonholed as a sex symbol. The charmed actress shaved her trademark long locks in November 2015 and has kept her cut short since then, labeling it a battle cry against society's expectations of women. In an article for ID Magazine, she wrote her reasons for getting rid of her hair, saying it made her angry that the most commonly asked question was whether she did it because she broke up with someone. She wrote, I realized I had broken up with someone. I broke up with you, the collective you, the societal you. I broke up with the Hollywood ideal, the one that I had been part in playing. The ideal version of a woman that is sold to you by every actress in every hair commercial telling you this is the secret to being beguiling, the secret to getting a man you want. My long hair had always made me uncomfortable. It felt like I had a plant on my head and a sex target on my back. Nah, bitch, you just hit the wall, okay? You're old, you're past 40, you didn't have any kids, you grow up in a sex cult that was probably, and we're going to read about how it was more than likely part of a CIA plan the whole time, because a lot of your members seem to have became quite famous. And uh, you did date Marilyn Manson, so come on. You're a freak. It's okay. Just admit to being a freak. It made men en masse look at me while the real me disappeared. The Grindhouse actress said that growing up, she had mostly had short hair and helped and had felt happier with her image. She wrote, I liked very much being an individual. I liked 
looking neither female nor male, nor hover, but hovering somewhere in between. Okay, so there you go. She is definitely, in my opinion, part of the whole CIA Mockingbird, uh, Monarch, Project Monarch. Uh, <laughs> she is pushing. She's part of the, uh, I'll, I'll say it, she's part of the Illuminati's agenda for androgyny. And definitely in cahoots with this whole feminist movement for the destabilization and destruction of all that was into what will be. I mean, hello, she did play in, uh, a witch in charm, so she's an occultist. Okay, flat out. I think her whole backstory is bullshit. Uh, they probably did get them out of the system, but then to uh, instigate them into the Hollywood scene. Because, you know, we are looking at River Phoenix is a, was part of this cult. Uh, she was part of it. Joaquin Phoenix is part of it. So, And I do have a little experience with this cult myself. Um, not to dox myself too much, but uh, I once was with a young lady that has been a member of this cult and told me very many dark secrets that had occurred in it. Don't want to go too much into it because it's a little painful, quite honestly, remembering it. And uh, so, yeah, that's uh, that's Rose McGowan for you. She is a part of this hashtag Me Too Times Up PSYOP that is being instituted on Western society and the world at large as we speak. So that's all I got for this. Ep Actually, wait, hold, hold up. Uh, let's let's read about the CIA real quick. Okay, I forgot about this. All right. This comes to us from a book written in 1993, The Children of God, a make-believe revolution? Question mark. Of course, links will be provided to everything I've covered in this. Uh, an unanswered question. In light of the frequently voiced suspicions, reports, and political observers in the somewhat surprising and social scientists have so rarely added the question of whether the religious cults of the 1970s were linked to the United States intelligence community. Most academic reports I have read did not bother to discuss the question of the CIA. Even though the involvement of the Korean CIA with the Moonies was a matter of public record, and the press in several countries accused David Berg of being a CIA agent. I'm going to leave a link in the description to uh, some Children of God documentaries that you can view, view to get you a better view of who this David Berg was and who the whole cult was in itself. Uh, I, I could talk about it, but I'm not really the expert on it. It's only just based on uh, what I had, what I've gleaned from an ex and uh, what I've read and seen online myself. But I'll leave links for you. Continuing. However, many social scientists and others spoke of their suspicions. It was unclear whether scholars had refrained from elaborating on the CIA question because they did not want they did not have any evidence or whether it was because they believed such charges were ludicrous. As for myself, I was asked so often if the children of God was CIA linked that I felt morally and intellectually obligated to find the answer. After all, how could I explain the philosophy and actions of a group without such a key piece of data? And how could I honestly interact with young disciples who believed in the sincerity of their leaders when I suspected otherwise? Unfortunately, because Children of God was very good, had very good security, I could, not, I could reach no conclusion on this question. That doesn't mean the question is answered in the negative, however, because the more I learn, the more quote-unquote coincidences I discovered. The children of God had a cozy relationship with some of the people the United States government was supporting overtly and covertly, like Ferdinand Marcos of the Philippines and the Christian Democratic Party in Italy. And where was Rose McGowan located? In Italy. They claimed that the Shah's wife liked them, and an American observer, Anonymous, wrote me from Peru in 1975, explaining that the military had such tight control that it was obvious the children of God had obtained military permission to be able to hand out leaflets. When the disciples started sleeping with outsiders as a way of winning influence in the system and targeting Libya's Colonel Muammar Gaddafi and his generals for this type of quote-unquote mission, one had to wonder. When they talked about using sex to make friends in South America and among well-to-do Arabs, a suspicious outsider could imagine ways that these friends might prove useful to intelligence agents. It goes on and on about, you know, okay, the question of possible cool intel pro. So I'll leave this link for you guys as well. I don't want to drag this video on forever. 
But uh, yeah, the the idea of sending in, like she said, like it says here, she says, you know, a type of mission to send in women to sleep with men. That was that was a big deal with the children of God sect. That's what the cult was about: using sex to gain control over men. Just why I'm a MGTOW monk, because he ain't gonna use sex to control me. I have gotten over that aspect of my life i don't let it control me by any means anyway gentlemen i hope you found some of this informative and entertaining at the same time uh again links will be provided to all of this please share like and subscribe if you've not already subscribed and uh get on in on the comment section and give me your take on it uh what do you think do you think that it's possible that do you agree with me that it is possible that this whole me too is a psy up and what are your takes on this cult and uh, its famous people. And what do you make of Miss Rose McGowan? Is she an occultist still to this day? Let me know what you think. Until next time, gentlemen, this is Savage McDowell. Take care. Conan, what is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of your women. That is good. That is good.